Hi, I'm Simon Glamble from Solar Sport, the Fox Racing Shocks distributor in Australia. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a lower leg lube change as well as a seal replacement. Today, we're going to be working on this Float 120 RLC with a fit cartridge. But this procedure can pretty much be done across the board for all Fox Shocks. So, the reason we're going to change the lubrication oil and the seals in this fork is it's done about 30 hours of riding. Now, the oil, after this amount of time, it gets a lot of dirt in it it gets old and it stops lubricating the fork properly. So it is good to do it every about every 30 hours in this case. This procedure is not, not hugely difficult. Um, just allow yourself the time to do it. Give yourself 40 minutes to an hour for something like this and just be careful again not to, to scratch anything or, or just be careful with all the components. They're delicate, you don't want to over torque anything. Just take your time. So to do this procedure we need a, a few tools. Um, first of which we'll need some oil to replace what we take out. You should be using the Fox 10 weight green to do this. Also some suspension grease. This is a, a newly released product from Fox. It's an, actually a seal driver to help you reinsert the seal into the lower leg. Available at any bike shop. You just must, might have to order it. A 19mm open ended spanner. A 10mm socket or T-bar. A piece of drift. Toothbrush. 2mm Allen key brush, uh, a, a long stick, some shop towels, a hammer, safety glasses, and the seal kit. Safety glasses on. Now even though we're not actually working on the air chamber of this fork, it's always good practice to let the air out. So hopefully at home you have a work stand like this, just a bike stand, one is fine. That you can hold the fork with as you're working on it. So first, we're going to take the rebound knob off the bottom of the cartridge. Yeah, cool. Using a 10mm T-bar or socket, take off the nuts from the bottom, as well as the crush washer, which generally comes off all in one go. In this next part we have to actually just tap the shafts out of the lower legs as they're pressed in when you do these bottom nuts up. What most people will do is, is thread this on halfway and actually hit it with a hammer to try and tap this. This is bad because one, this is a very soft aluminium nut, it can actually flare the nut out and then your rebound knob can't actually go over the top of it so you won't get a proper rebound adjustment. Really the correct thing to do is to use a piece of drift. Now this one has a small hole drilled in it, it's just a, a soft aluminium shaft so it's not going to mark or dent or hurt anything. Over the top and give it a, a tap with a hammer. Just a few little taps is all it takes. Now the lowers are loose, you can actually just pull them off a little bit. Don't pull them off all the way. What we'll do is drop the old oil into a plastic container. It's simple, you can let the oil drain out of the fork over a few minutes. Now we're going to remove the old seals with a 19mm open ended spanner. I'm just going to insert it into there, just where the little foam ring sits, and just push. Very gently, and they'll pop out. Same again on the other side. Popped out. Now that we've removed the seals, Remove the foam rings. What you're left with is a empty fork full of bushings. Now we're going to give them a quick clean out with some brake cleaner. So brake cleaner or alcohol, something that's not going to leave a residue in the lower leg, is better than a harsh degreaser or, or some, some water-based cleaners that you could use. Once you've got most of the, the oil out, a little bit more brake cleaner. and then a soft brush to get a lot of the loose debris out, as so, and either a rag on a stick like this, and spin around a lower like that, or some compressed air. It's a bit messy. So 
So we're just going to give the legs a quick wipe to make sure there's no longer any dirt on them at all. You can also use some compressed air to help get all the old oil out of the fork. Now that we've finished the disassemble and the cleaning of the fork, we're going to put some new seals in. So these seals are available as a part from just about any major bike shop. What you get is two foam rings, two oil and dust wiper seals, and then some crush washers. In the case of this fork, we'll be using the two plastic crush washers. If it was a talus, you'd be using the metal one on the spring side. First thing we want to do is just stretch the wipers ever so slightly and pre-soak them in some Fox 10 weight oil. Sweet. Now in production, the seals come out with a slight waxy coating to help them release from the actual mold. So what we're going to do is clean that off with a clean rag and some brake cleaner. Now using the 32mm seal driver, we're going to insert the seal into the lower leg. So line up the seal, the seal driver on top, and just push, keeping the seal nice and straight as you put it into the lower leg. Hold it there for a moment, and you're done. Apply a small amount of suspension grease to the inner lip of the seal. Now we're going to insert the foam rings. Placing each one like that. What the foam rings do is help keep oil up at the top of the fork. As the staunchion goes in and out, the oil is wiped onto them and it helps reapply the oil as the staunching comes back down into the fork. So now we're going to reinstall the lower leg. Firstly pull the fit cartridge to a full extension. Slide the lowers on and just start them getting them on the staunching just at the lower part and they'll sl As you slide the lower legs on, stop a little bit before you see the air piss in the cartridge pop out the end. You can also turn the lockout on, on a fit cartridge, to stop it compressing and falling away. So now we're going to insert some oil into the fork. Always use Fox 10 weight green for the lower leg lubrication. In this case, we need 20 millilitres. It gets inserted, like so. All the oil levels are different for most forks, so make sure you check with the Fox Racing Shocks website. Now we're going to put the bottom nuts back on, starting with the cartridge side. We're going to swap the crush washers for new ones that came in the pack. Now you can slide the lower leg all the way on until the cartridge pops out the bottom. Using a 10mm socket again, making sure you be very careful not to cross thread. I'm going to screw it on until it stops and we're just going to nip it up. It should be about five or six newton meters all up. So I'm going to do the same with the air piston side. And again, five or six newton meters. So now that we've installed both bottom nuts, we're going to install a rebound knob. Make sure you, you align the grub screw with the small indent in the shaft. Not too tight, just firm. Just using a shock pump, we're going to put some air back in the fork. And we've got the fancy new Fox digital pump, but this is not exactly required. So just as a base setting to start off the setup of the fork, put your kilograms of body weight in PSI in the fork. So if you weigh 80 kilos, put 80 PSI in the fork. And then reattach it to your bike and set your sag. And, and that's pretty much all there is to it. A um, few little things to watch out for. On your first ride you might get a bit of oil residue coming out of the seal. Nothing really to worry about. Um, reattach it to your bike, set your sag and go and have fun.